Welcome to World's Finest, the weekly DC Comics review. As always, I am Phil Parrish, and joining me is... Yes, that's right. Once again, as the week of Christmas, uh, Little Hellfire and I could not sync up schedules, so... I am going to take you... We're going to have a special kind of episode here. I only got five books this week. I'm going to take you through the first four books solo, and then for the last one, I have a special guest, uh, my co-host on the all-new Marvel Roundup, uh, Mr. Charlie Esser. He's trying to expand his horizons comic-wise, so he's been trying to pick up at least one DC book a week or every other week or so. So after I do my four, you're going to get the marvelous DC review of Mr. Charlie Esser. And hopefully, if time allows, after Charlie and I am done, Charlie and I are done, we are going to get, you should be able to get Lilith Hellfire's reviews of some of the books this week, but not with us. So, sit back and relax, here comes part one, just me rambling to myself, so, here we go. Uh, I'm going to start with Batgirl 49. Uh... I like this issue more than a lot of the other books in this run. You know, they're not... You can tell they're not totally pandering to the teenage girl audience. Uh, there's no mentions of selfies and, you know, all that stuff. Uh, we do get a tour through Barbara Gordon's uh, head because... I guess the, this new villain... Uh, what are they calling him? Maybe Fugue? Um, it's basically the guy who is masquerading as an old high school friend of Barbara's, but meanwhile, he, he didn't know her in high school, I guess. He's able to, he's been planting false memories in Barbara's head, and that's why she doesn't remember stuff, or she remembers it wrong, and we get the origin of this, I guess, who knows how long ago... She caught a burglar, uh, oh, he was a bank robber, uh, and she eventually catches him, and I guess he swears revenge, so, he, he says he can break in the, he can just basically break into anything, so he's breaking into her brain, uh, putting false memories in of her father, basically throwing himself Throwing himself out a window once he finds out she's bat he's she's Batgirl, but that doesn't really happen. Uh but we get some she gets some help here. Uh from her friend Frankie as actually able to use a device, go in and help Barbara battle this guy in her head. Uh but then she, Frankie's like, I can't break all this guy's block. So basically she takes the uh the cyber download that went evil for a while. It's a copy of Barbara's brain. So she kind of sinks them on a suggestion from Black Canary. Uh, which brings Barbara back. But uh, she's like, to, to, to defeat Fugue, she's going to need help. So it looks like issue 50 next, I'm guessing next month, is going to be a big team up of her, Black Canary, Frankie, Spoiler, and Bluebird. Um... I would assume 50 is going to be an over, uh, uh, more expensive issue because every 50 I've seen so far, like there's one this week and all the other ones I've seen advertised for next week are $4.99, so expect a $2 price jump. Uh, Batgirl 49, I'm going to give it a 3.5. Like I said, uh, it's a lot. It's getting... <laughs> they're going to end this just as it's getting better and better. Uh I think they're starting to, they've really hit their stride now. The art, the story, uh, Babstar's art has really grown on me. And, like I said, they're not, it doesn't seem like such, such, like there's as much pandering to the teenage girl audience. Not that, not that we shouldn't have a teenage girl audience, but I think you should write an all ages, all background story. I know it's not always the easiest, but. I think DC's getting the message, too. That's what Rebirth is all about. It's like, all right, we need to write to a general audience. We need to get back to basics, what made these characters great. Um, so it's three and a half. 
Uh, next up is Batman and Robin Eternal 22. Uh, we're winding down here. It's like me and Lil say almost every week. I guess 26 is going to be the final issue. Uh, this is 22. Uh, not a lot of action. We see uh, David Kane get away with uh, Harper Row and Cassandra. Uh, taking them to Mother. And then the part I really didn't like about this issue is it's basically like Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, and Tim Drake sitting around saying, oh god, what are we going to do? Uh, we can't beat Mother, must be hopeless, even Batman couldn't do it. But, <laughs> I'm sure, I hope Lil talks about this later on. Uh, sh I don't know if this is going to be Lil's favorite part, probably not. Uh, basically, Damien has to smack some sense into them and, and say... You really don't know. You you think your failures, you know, you don't you don't know what Bruce thought about all of you. And they, through a flashback, they basically show uh, uh, Damien saying, uh, you know, Bruce wants to make him a soldier. And Bruce says, "I never wanted to make you a soldier." He said, uh, "But he said, Dick, a clearer version of what Batman was meant to be. Jason is willing to do what Batman can't when the world needs it." Tim has a strategic sense I envy. I've never seen him move too early. Sometimes you do, Damien, but that might save you. Because I guess that's the whole point of the Robins in Bruce's mind. I want you to decide for yourselves what you do. Who you become. And he says... You know, he tells Damien, I never wanted to make soldiers. I want you to become Robins. To trust yourselves. To know someone believes in you. My job isn't to train you to make the same decisions I'd make. My job is to catch you until you decide for yourselves. <sighs> Heavy stuff. Uh, uh, like I said, I, that, that, that snaps the Robins in the uh, shape. Uh, and then David King goes crawling back to Mother and saying, Everything I did, I did for you. Look, I brought you the girls back. And... Mother basically slits his throat and throws him out. Throws him into a pit, so. Then she starts turning on satellites, so. The Robins have their work cut out for them, but I think everything is going to be alright. They, they, they snap, too. <laughs> um, th this was close to my pick of the week, but it kind of got edged out. Um, it's a good solid four for me. It would have been higher, but like I said, I didn't buy the moping Robin routine. Um, next I will move on to Batman Beyond number 10. Uh, it's basically Tim Drake in the, uh, Beyond suit. Uh, he's, he's battling the Splicers and the, uh, Dr. Abel Coover, Couvier, or, <laughs> sorry, I am horrible with back, back ah, last name's Doctor. Uh, <laughs> We get a lot of back and forth. Matt McGinnis finds uh, the Justice League Beyond basically in suspended animation. Meanwhile, riots are breaking out over medicine and food. You know, at the walls surrounding Gotham. <laughs> Keep that in mind, Mr. Trump. Uh, so basically, the Justice League wakes up, and for some reason, I don't know why... Maybe my reading comprehension is just slow, but the Justice League just automatically jumps to the conclusion that Tim is working for Brother Eye. Don't ask me why. So they are attacking him. Uh, Big Barda, Hawkman, Green Lantern. Uh, and basically, they have him down, and it looks like they're taking like kill. It looks like it could be like a killing shot. So I don't know how Tim's gonna get out of this one, but. Like I said, not a lot of action until the end when the Justice League decided to just take it on themselves to beat the guano out of Tim Drake. Uh, a, a solid three and a half. Um, there have been more solid issues of this, but this one wasn't bad. Three and a half. Um, I just wonder if they're going to tie stuff up before Rebirth or if they're just going to go kind of just, I don't know, just do a polishing and keep going with Tim after Rebirth. I guess we'll see. All right, the last book I'm going to talk to talk uh, talk about on my own is Green Lantern number fifty. Uh, this book 
is, like I said, like I've been telling Lilith, it's been going up in quality, I think, month by month. And this one was pretty good, but warning, it's a number 50, like I said, so it's four ninety nine. So, if you're, hmm, if you're not a Lantern fan, you might want to skip it, but it is pretty good. Um, you know, we see flashes back to, uh, the 90s with how Jordan the ruins of Coast City basically saying, you know, it's all my fault, everything's dead, but, uh, then they flash to the present where Hal's in the new 52 Coast City and everything's fine, and basically Parallax decides how Jordan has to die. Uh, and meanwhile, Hal was with his brother and his family. Uh, we get some good scenes, but then Parallax surprises present day Hal's uh, sister in law and niece and nephew in the park, which <laughs> angers present day Hal. So, <laughs> and then his and then Hal's brother shows up and says, "How was that you and present day Hal's?" telling them about all these childhood memories they have but meanwhile parallax has them too so they're like what's going on <laughs> who knows let's fight so present day how and parallax go at it nice little uh for you action fans they're going at it uh just tearing up coast city uh but then something happens the present day how he kind of lets loose uh he's able to go toe to toe with parallax who's rocking the powers of 3600 green lanterns but uh all of a sudden it looks like how becomes like an energy being uh parallax retreats but not before he tells how you know all of this your life your city it's all going to be mine again but he's got the parallax face. It, yeah, the parallax face on, you know, the teeth and everything. So, um, who knows? Maybe they'll rumble again in 50 or 51. But, uh, Powell wants to know what's going on. He's like, I have will. But and it looks like he solidifies himself again. But when he goes to see his brother, he's all green, glowy, and transparent. So, I don't know if. Who knows? Maybe, maybe this, maybe this is a way that Hal's gonna bring the Green Lantern Corps back to this universe. Maybe he's becoming more in sync with Oa and the Central Battery, or maybe with the upcoming Rebirth, could they merge the two Hal Jordans and give us like a complete whole Hal Jordan? I would be interested in seeing that. This is a four, and for for this book, I was down on it when right after convergence but like i said it's coming up in my eyes it's a big solid four uh hopefully with rebirth we get i want to see a confident but not too cocky and arrogant hal jordan i want to see hero hal jordan and like his brother even says in this book he's like when's the last time you had a day job you know because hal jordan literally has been in space for years the only time we really see him on earth anymore except for like a couple issues ago were in like any justice league books he appeared in uh I like some of the space stuff, but for Rebirth, DC, Jeff Johns, Jeff Johns, you love Green Lantern, please, I know you're probably not writing him again, but please, let's get a lot of, let's build a life for Hal Jordan on Earth, you know, whether he's back in the Air Force or he's back at Ferris Air with Carol, uh, just give us, yeah, I like some, at least split it 50-50 between space and Earth, if not keeping him on Earth more, I like him bad. The whole thing with Sonar, that, that's when it, it really came up in my eyes. Uh, how and Sonar, you know, him battling Sonar on Earth. You could bring Black Hand back to Earth. I mean, even half these space threats. Sinestro can come looking for him on Earth, but... Okay, DC, I guess that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Bring Hal back to Earth. Alright, everyone. That's my solo books for the week. Now, stay tuned, because coming up, it's going to be me talking to my Marvel co-host, Mr. Charlie Esser, about his marvelous DC review of the week, where we are going to discuss Swamp Thing number three. Hey, everyone, it's Phil again. I'm back, like I promised. Uh, and like I said, 
Now we're going to do a uh, special segment. Hopefully it becomes a uh, regular thing, hopefully a weekly thing. Uh, as I said, joining me now to review Swamp Thing number three is my co-host from the all-new Marvel Roundup, Mr. Charlie Esser. Hello, it is Charlie the Professor Esser, Professor of Marvel. But here I am to do a marvelous review of Swamp Thing number three. Okay, um, I'm going to start off by saying my biggest connection to Swamp Thing is, of course, the classic movie with Adrian Barbeau. Um, without a doubt, one of the finest interpretations of the character I've ever seen, because it's the only interpretation of the character I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> but let me just... Um, Okay, I do know a little bit more about the Swamp Thing. I do know uh, that Alan Moore did a whole thing about how the Swamp Thing isn't really the scientist. He's the Swamp's interpretation of the scientist, yada, 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 yada. I'm just going to say, Marvel did it first with the Man Thing, when the Man Thing went off to paradise, and then another Man Thing rose up in his place. Um, so, again, I always do see copy. Yeah, but they, they kind of wiped that out when they went to New 52, so well, yeah, as, you, yeah. as you kind of saw in this issue, yeah, he, he is yes. the scientist. Yeah, as he says, he is not the first man thing, he won't be the last, or the first swamp thing, he won't be the last. They're all a ripoff of the heap, so it's okay to point out that everyone ripped mm. off from everyone. Heap was first, go heap, go. Golden Age hero, swamp creature from World War One. No one's ever done a heap movie. Why is there not a heap movie? Uh-huh. Get whoever owns the right to the heap i want to i want to see heap the film okay you know um dc probably owns it because they bought up a lot of stuff so you know what wonder woman is in world war one let's have her team up with the heap okay mm-hmm. all that out of the way <laughs> um i'm gonna say i like this issue i did like this issue despite a number of nitpicky problems uh, i'm gonna just start off with giving it uh three orchids out of five um, orchids, of course, are what these little orchids from the Swamp Thing movie. I was actually trying to desperately look up what the actual scientific name of that orchid was, and I couldn't, so I'm just going to say three orchids out of five. Mm-hmm. But um, So to give you the review of the book, it opens up with uh, Swamp Thing clearly handling this uh, boa constrictor that he's fighting with, you know, and then somebody goes and shoots the head off this boa constrictor for no good reason because it's not like the swamp thing was actually in a position of being in danger from this boa constrictor at the time because he had it over his head and he was holding it mm-hmm. and also it's the freaking swamp thing yeah. who i'm sure has some kind of class 100 strength or something like that i'm sure that there's some time when swamp thing has fought solomon grunty and come out way ahead um, or possibly some other big bruiser where the Swamp Thing won because he's the freaking Swamp Thing. Uh, um, and then we find out it's this gentleman by the name of Matthew Cable, mm-hmm. who is an FBI agent who had worked with him, then got reassigned to someplace else, then retired, and spent his remaining years looking for a cure for the Swamp Thing. Uh, runs through a quick um, uh, who's who of some... Uh, B-level DC mystical characters, uh, Mr. E, who is also a D- Marvel character, though a different one, uh, Felix Faust, who is absolutely a DC character, and then the Enchantress, who also a Marvel character, but also a DC character, and whom <clears throat> they're drawing in green with blonde hair. I don't know who did it first, but I'm going to say Marvel did it best. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along, he goes to some mystical Indian city called Nandan Parbat. Nanda Parbat. Uh, oh, that. Oh, that's right. You're not watching Arrow, so yeah. Oh, okay. Named, so Nanda named... Parbat has come up mm-hmm. before. Yes. Here I thought this was just made up randomly, but okay. So no. Nanda Parbat is a um, is a thing in the DC universe, and they have what's called the Hand of Fatima, also called the Monkey's Paw, and and, and uh, other. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing it was stolen up fire. Um, the Hand of Fatabot grants a wish. And uh, okay. Uh, meanwhile, something apparently from a previous issue, a guy is p- full of demons. 
His parents are being arrested for it. They're calling attorneys, including including Clarence Starrow, for some reason. The sheriff is saying, I don't know if you needed a sheriff in this town or an exorcist. A redheaded gentleman is working with him. She seems to be a cop as well. Yes, also a cop. Uh, says he's got her back 24-7. Who knows if that's true? And let me tell you why. Who knows if that's true? Because D.C. doesn't have a what happened last issue page in the front. Oh, that's annoying. That's one of those nitpicky things that bug me as a first-time reader of this book. There is not a quick handy reference to know what the heck I'm jumping into, who the, who the main characters are, and where we are in the story. Yeah, but I don't. Uh, yeah, the first two issues. I mean, just real quick, that body on the table's a zombie. There was uh, these parents resurrected their uh, college-age son who basically got involved with this experiment that killed him, and they resurrected him, but. I guess he didn't want to be resurrected, so he started attacking everyone. He even tried to attack his parents until Swamp Thing took him out. Well, yeah, because if you think about resurrection, it's like it's like if you're assuming that the soul lives on, mm-hmm. there's, generally speaking, we're told they're in paradise. It's like, oh, let's take you out of paradise. Let's take you out of wherever you went to for our selfish reasons. That's pretty, that's pretty cruel when you think about it. You well, know? Yeah, they, they, they basically, even Swamp Thing, I think, basically even told them that. Yeah, there's actually, you know, in Last Temptation of Christ, there's a great scene where after he resurrects uh, Lazarus, and Lazarus is, like, really kind of, like, freaked out by coming back to life. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, Lazarus was only in the underworld, because, of course, of course, by Christian mythology, all souls were in the underworld in Sheol until uh, the resurrection of Christ, then souls were allowed into heaven. Way too much uh, backstory here. But yeah, but you got to imagine that being resurrected from the dead, going from some place of perfect bliss to coming to, or even just a place of quiet sleep, to the cacophony of life is got to be a little disturbing. Anyway, so they take the hand of Fatima to Zatanna, because apparently Dr. Fate was not available this issue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. I love Zatanna. That's why I picked up this book. I love Zatanna, and they don't even put her in costume, which is nitpick number two. Uh, so nitpick one, number one, no where are we now, Paige. Nitpick number two, Zatanna's not in costume. And I get it's a complex, difficult costume, but what they put her in is hardly – it's not like they have her in sweat. She's wearing this mm-hmm. barely there silken robe that it ha- has apparently the magical ability to – just cover her enough. Because when she's sitting on the couch, it's ankle length. When she's standing up, it's thigh length. So, um... <laughs> yeah, but I mean, in her defense, she is in her home. I mean, do you, you going to wear your work clothes at home 24-7? Captain America does. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I can't think of the last time I saw Doctor Strange outside of the cloak of levitation. I'm just saying. He does it occasionally. <laughs> but usually when he's doing magic, it's ready for battle. And you know, <laughs> no, and I, I I do get it. And actually, it's not something that kind of bugged me until later. And I was like, wait, we ever actually see Satana in her costume? And it's a cool costume. I love that costume, the little tuxedo with the bow tie. Yeah, she's on like, the cover sh- in it. I know it's showmanship. It's false advertising. Anyway, uh, mm-hmm. basically, they do the magic, magic. You know, uh, Zatanna says, you know, basically, costs are magic. You sure you want to do this? There's side effects. Blah 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 blah. And everyone's like, "Yeah, absolutely, we're gonna do this. Why wouldn't we?" See, this is my, th- this is my that was my one. I think my only nitpick is, wouldn't you ask what the price is? Because you, I mean, even without her warning, you know, magic comes with a price. But she even says, you know, it comes with a price. I wouldn't you be like, uh, "What is it?" I mean, wouldn't you be worried if something bad would happen? I mean, well, something okay. even worse would happen. Like, okay, if you do this, I mean, like twenty infants somewhere in the world aren't gonna like drop dead, are they? Yeah. Well, true that. But here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Clearly, Matt knew what the cost was, which is that goes the yeah. curse of the swamp thing goes from you to me, and it. And so he was ready for it. And he says at the end, "Well, what did you expect was going to happen?" Which means that he didn't tell him that this is what he was going to do, which is kind of a jerk move. Yeah, but especially. Wouldn't Alec ask what the price is? I don't know. Is he a dumb guy? No. Uh, well, he's supposed to be a scientist. <laughs> so, is, so is Scott Lang, my friend. So is oh. Scott Lang. <laughs> Do you understand that? Listen to last week's all-new Marvel Roundup. 
October the time this comes out two weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, you know, yeah, well, clearly, so I get like, oh, I'm going to be cured. I'm going to be cured. But though that was kind of weird to me in, as well, because like one second he's saying, at the very beginning, he's saying, um, you know, there's no way it's not going to work. Okay, well, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it couldn't work. But if it could, well, let's go see my friend. You have a car. Then they go from, I'm guessing, Louisiana to somewhere in New England, which is north of Jersey, legally speaking. Actually, technically north of New York. New York isn't even considered New England. It's really Connecticut and beyond. Um, so that's a long drive they went when his Prius with a swamp thing in the back seat. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, and so for those who don't understand what I'm saying, uh, basically Matt took on the Swamp Thing for himself, and he's all Swamp Thinged out, and Alec is like, what, why? And it's like, for, and again, like you said, why didn't he ask? But I can, I can get the idea that the other guy didn't hide it, but at the same time, it comes into this thing. If his whole reason for doing this is to find a cure for the Swamp Thing, wouldn't... Like, how does this solve anything? It's like, well, now I have the curse that, oh, I just spent the last few years of my life desperately trying to find a cure for i can't imagine this will haunt you in any way <laughs> well, <laughs> you know yeah this, so, this like, if i'm this even a... in one one small way responsible it's like well now i'm completely responsible for this so clearly now i've got to find a cure for you which it doesn't make a lot of sense <laughs> this is a, this yeah this is a six issue mini series so i'm thinking by issue six the whole point's going to be you know, there has to be a swamp thing, and he's probably going to take the curse back, and it's going to be like, well, there always has to be a swamp thing, so I guess I'll be this, you know, I'll take it so no one else has to. I'm hoping they leave Matt in it. I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that next issue, which I don't know if I'm going to get, but I'm hoping next issue is like, okay, bye, Matt. <laughs> Have fun in the swamp. Don't shoot any snakes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to get it. I'll tell you what happens. I'll tell you what happens. But I mean, just as long I just want you, you know, just as long as you're doing one a week. I don't care what is what issue it uh, issue it is. No, no, no. marvelous uh, review of a DC comic is going to continue as long as my cash holds out. <laughs> but and what about see, your, what holding about your challenge? What? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. What I'm about getting your to challenge? that. Okay. Don't, don't don't break my flow, man. I got a flow. <laughs> I was actually going to compliment on DC on holding the line at two ninety nine. Um, two ninety nine. What does it cost me to pick it up? Three bucks. I can do. Um, well, some of their I, books, some of their books aren't two ninety nine right now. But that's what they're saying. With with well, with, well, with the whole rebirth thing, they're going back to that. Every book's going to be two ninety nine after rebirth. Yeah. Well, they pretty much have to because this is like what the third rebirth birth this week. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Oh, I can rip on DC. I'm a Marvel boy. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yes, the challenge. So as many of you know, uh, my arch nemesis, uh, Lilith Hellfire, is our resident DC expert on the um, World's Finest podcast. And so as I am now here giving the mom marvelous dc review i asked her to i asked her to give the decidedly conscientious review of one marvel book a week to come on to the all new all different marvel roundup with me and phil or at least, or at least just with phil at the end of what she does with, she, you don't have to talk to me lilith i know you despise me um, <laughs> as my nemesis. uh <laughs> Although I have always admitted I am the villain of the piece, um, and that's okay. I've come to terms with that. Uh, <laughs> I invite you, I invite you, Lilith Hellfire, to review one Marvel book a week and uh, give your take on it. Uh, both by and remember, I gave a glowing review to Starfire. I really liked Starfire, so don't take my negativity towards the Swamp Thing. Which also, again, I gave three orchids out of five. I enjoyed it, and give a thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs three to four quarters somewhere uh, review of a Marvel book. Will you do this for me, Lilith? I'll take your response offline. <laughs> uh, all right. Is that is that your thoughts on Swamp Thing? Well, I gave it a little. What'd you give it? I gave it a four and a half. It's my pick of the week. Oh, Um, like like I said, I I wasn't quite as nitpicky as you, but um, I that did bother me with the whole thing where he didn't ask what the uh, you know, what the consequences of the deal would be. Yeah. Well, but you know what? At the same time, I get I kind of get that 
because he is the guy who's dealing with the curse, and someone mm-hmm. says he can remove the curse. It bothered me more that he starts off by saying it can't work, and then said, "Get your keys." You know, mm-hmm. I, I kind of thought that was a little weirder there. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, my big, in, in all honesty, my biggest nitpick with the book is just not having a "Where Are We Now?" page. Um, I guess that's what that extra dollar with a Marvel book buys you is a "Where Are They Now?" page. Um, <laughs> And uh, the digital code, yes. Yeah, and the digital code, yes. You know, so they, you get you get a little extra for that that extra buck. But um, no, I really like the book. I did see that coming, like halfway through. Like uh, mm-hmm. I didn't know that Matt was going to know that that was the case. Um, but I did know that he was going to wind up with the Swamp Thing curse at the end. I was waiting for them to give me like a twist. Like, no, actually, Zatanna winds up with the Swamp Thing curse. Oh no, uh-huh. man, a pain in the butt. Um, but, uh, yeah, and, and really it didn't bother me that she wasn't in her uniform. It really didn't. I mean, I I guess what kind of made me kind of like wonder is like, okay, she's not in her uniform, but her other outfit is like no less revealing. So it's not like you're saying she's not dressing in her uniform because, you know, she's just hanging around the house in her sweats. No, she's still basically naked. Um, in a way, I kind of think that maybe if she was just going around sky clad, which is a mystical term, um, <laughs> you know, at least if you believe in modern witchcraft, a mystical thing, you know, that if she was just walking around, you know, naked, that might have been a little more practical. Because, you know, what's more comfortable than naked? And, um, and you're in your oh. own house, and you just got swamp things and FBI agents coming in. What do you care? It's like, you know, yeah, okay, eyes up here, you know, which you have to do anyway, because you still got your cleavage out you know i mean you know you're gonna you're gonna be dealing with that anyway so you know why why even bother with clothing um i don't know maybe she doesn't like to sweat on the couch i guess that may be it Uh, (laughs) but no i did i did really enjoy the book i did like it a lot it was fun um it was like i said i picked it up because it's a tonic because i like her although i kind of would have liked the i like the backwards mysticism but i like to make the point that what she's doing here is a little deeper darker more concerted magic um you know and again one thing i'm going to say is i love the lettering you know it's like every so often you see someone who really does good lettering Mm -hmm. who really understands how lettering works and you know with uh you know with the creepy border and and things like that i really think that they that their letterer who was our letterer our letterer was Rob Lay, Rob Lay, or Lee, L-E-I-G-H, Rob Lee, you are a fantastic letterer. You probably don't get enough praise for your lettering. I'm giving it to you now, buddy. You are a letterer for the ages. And he, yeah, and even the art's good, Kelly Jones, he did he did oh, that. Yeah. He he worked on Batman in the 90s. It, mm. I always I liked his artwork since then. Yeah, well, his artwork's very good. Um the inks, you know, the artwork and the inks together make a really great. It gives it that really oh, yeah. strong EC look, mm-hmm. uh, which I think is really great for the Swamp Thing. I think that's, you know, the Swamp Thing is very much an EC kind of book, you know, um, uh, kind of tales from horror and tales of the crypt horror kind of book. Uh, that's of course cer- certainly where it drives, and so they do the shadows very very well here, and um, you know, and the happiness of. Uh, of Alec is great here, even though he's, you know, uh, as as he tastefully <laughs> positions things in front of his nudity. Um, but, yeah, I liked it. And, like I said, quite, quite, quite frankly, right now, I'm hoping it ends with Matt is Swamp Thing. Why not? You know, you know, Alec can be all down about it. But, hey, you know, Matt Swamp Thing now, that's that's what he that's what he chose. He mm-hmm. made a choice. It's like, it's you know, it says be careful what you wish for. But, you know, the. This is what he wanted. He says, no, I wanted to be Swamp Thing. And, you know, and maybe he get, you know, of course, maybe the next issue is, and now that I'm Swamp Thing, I will make you all pay, for I am God now. Mwah! Swamp creatures, attack! Is that a power I have? Attack! I don't know. It's... <laughs> I'm going to be Swamp Thing. Can I command the creatures of the swamp? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it. And who knows, maybe it will wind up here. You know, I, I, I got to get one a week. So, you know. If this is the one, Starfire is coming back. I'm interested to see where she goes. So maybe mm-hmm. Swamp Thing comes back. We'll see. All right. Well, uh, everyone, share your thoughts on DC books with us. Especially, do you have suggestions? What should Charlie uh, try? I gave him the suggestion of Grayson. Uh, it was sold out last week, but uh, yeah, send your 
Send your suggestions. Uh, World's Finest Pod at gmail.com. On Facebook, we're World's Finest Podcast. On Twitter, we're at World's Finest Pod. And our shared Instagram with uh, Charlie and my podcast, uh, All New Marvel Roundup. It's World's Finest Roundup on Instagram. Uh, and you can discuss anything Marvel or DC with me. Uh, NightwingPDP at gmail.com. On Twitter, I am at NightwingPDP. Uh, Charlie, tell these DC folks where they can get a hold of you. You can always write to me at the Super Connectivity blog at gmail.com. That's Super Connectivity blog at gmail.com. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, where I will occasionally do Legends of Tomorrow or the occasional Supergirl or Gotham or, of course, Agents of Shield. You can write. You can tweet me at Charlie Esser. That's C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle for quality. All right, everyone. Like I said, hopefully coming up next is a uh, little thoughts on the week's books. Hey, world's finest crew. It's Lilith. Sorry, life has struck once again, and I wasn't able to join Phil. For this week's roundup, but I do have some thoughts. I read mainly bat books this week, with the exception of two being uh, Swamp Thing number three and Omega Men number nine. Uh, so yeah, I got six books. Let's just get right into it. We'll start with Batgirl number 49. Uh, I actually really enjoyed this this particular issue. I... I'll just go out on a limb and say this is like a tie for my pick of the week. I uh, really love the legacy and the respect uh, and the modern memory that they have with this issue. Um, I thought everybody came together to do a really great job. And it hasn't really been like this, done this well since the relaunch with New 52. You know, I've always had problems with that. But, you know, we're, we're rounding it up. They're making her more kick butt. Uh, I've always had a problem with how focused they are on the side characters and the drama and the romance, but all that kind of just fades away in this issue. Uh, I really hope to see a return to form once Rebirth is all said and done. So, yeah. I just, I was just feeling this issue. Like I said, everything came together. This is a 4.75 for me. There's nowhere to go but up for this book, I hope, especially if they keep the team intact moving forward. Babs is coming into her own and you know from what I hear uh critically as well as the target de- demo for this book is doing you know it's blowing all expectations out of the water so congratulations to everybody working on that book right now uh let's move over to another bat book of course uh Batman 66 meets the man from uncle number four. Oh man I was really bummed about this issue I'd been enjoying this uh this book for the first three issues and uh you know this this one kind of fell apart unfortunately uh but you know they do they do have some highlights poison ivy and scarecrow are in this and so also something really funny happens you know the protagonists get their gadgets which both uh, sets of protagonists are known very well for the gadgets that they use and so i like that they kind of took that out of the equation and it's more of a battle of wits kind of thing so but, you know, the plot is losing steam and it's very obvious. So this is like a three for me. It was still a fun read. It's still only two ninety nine, Uh And it's fun, Batman. And I think that Batman at this point in time can use some fun. So that's pretty much what I've been reading these uh, Batman 66 meets titles for, as well as all the other crossovers that uh, the Batman title has been doing. You guys know I've been loving Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles lately as well. That did the crossover with Batman. So there you go. If you're into this kind of thing, definitely pick it up. I mean, it's, it's average, but it's still a fun read, you know? So what's next on the Bat Book agenda? Ah, uh, yes. Batman and Robin Eternal number 22. Good grief. <laughs> I'm just like counting the days, the weeks until this is over at this point. Um, it's very obvious we're biding time. Uh, the story is just very average. Uh, but I do, you can tell that they're sitting at the end of, uh, Valentine's arc and, you know, I really like how they're portraying the connection between the Robins and the depravity of Mother. So there's that. I just, 
every time I think I'm ready for a weekly series and then I remember, oh yeah, that's a lot of story to tell in a year. And of course there's going to be filler, but at least let it be fun filler. And this was definitely fun filler for me, but we've had more fun filler uh, in the in this Batman and Robin Eternal. So, you know, I'm just pretty much ready to be done with this story, unfortunately. But it's still an okay title. I mean, it's still an okay issue. I gave it a 3.25. The artwork is still solid. The characterization is great. So it's just, you know, um, I can tell that they're losing steam and they're ready to wrap things up. And so am I. That's all. Okay. Moving right along to Batman Beyond number 10. I actually really enjoyed this issue. Um, I wasn't expecting to. This totally caught me off guard. Uh, you know, we've got splicers and we're doing DNA experiments and it's just very, uh, reminiscent of the tail end of Batman Beyond, uh, with Terry McGinnis, the, the cartoon. And, you know, we see just these really great little things, but we're still being reminded of Brother Eye. I don't really know why. Um, but we also get Justice League Beyond, which is just everything, and that needs its own spinoff uh, <laughs> comic book one of these days. I really enjoy that about this issue, by the way. Uh, I don't know. For some reason, the two ninety nine books have just really been killing it, while the overpriced ones haven't really been doing their job. But, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. It's just some things that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, I guess, and it, it just couldn't have been my pick of the week. Um. But the artwork, the co- everything from the coloring to the lettering to everything, like all the technical aspects of this book were just mind boggling good. And I enjoyed it. And uh, I'm really going to enjoy this arc. Actually, it's it's looking to be really great. Um, this is a 3.5 for me. So, yeah, that is Batman Beyond number 10. <sighs> OK, I think that's all of the Bat books. So let's move over to hmm, Omega Men number nine. Oh my gosh, this this title continues to be just really fantastic. Tom King is just really doing such a great job with this. It feels like it's out of his element, but like in a good way. And it's made him stretch his creative chops in a way. And uh, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, Barnaby uh, Baginda is also doing really great with the art. I absolutely, absolutely love these uh, covers. Uh, these covers could be frameworks of art. It's very noir and throwbackish, and I, that's just right in my wheelhouse where I live and breathe. So, you know, the technical stuff for this book has always been great. And the story's tight, the pacing is fast, and I just can't get over the, dyna- the dynamics in this team. I just, I'm really enjoying it, and I, I'm just so shocked that I enjoy this this book so much. But yeah, um, this is a four for me. I highly encourage you guys to uh, pick up Omega Man when it comes out in trade. I think that it is a fast-paced read, and the month-to-month wait kills me every time. And, you know, with the exception of maybe two issues, I've been blown away every time. So I can't recommend this title enough. And I hope something uh, comes from this title also out of Rebirth. They'd kind of be a fool not to. Um, So yeah. Moving right along to what next? Oh yeah, Swamp Thing number three. I, I of course I love Swamp Thing. I love I love this one actually. This one was really good. I don't think it was as good as the first two in my personal opinion, but it's still really good. Um, so you know, I I really like the the green storyline. I like how you know Alec Holland is uh trying to regain his old life but you know it just never it's just never gonna happen for Alec it's just not and um that that's kind of the the push and pull of Swamp Thing I guess and I thought that the artwork was just oh my gosh it was so good it was such a throwback to old Swamp Thing very macabre and dark and spooky and it just has that horror feel and that's just something we haven't had in a really long time on the pages of DC and I'm really enjoying that particular aesthetic. And, you know, the characterization is just so spot on. And, you know, we have Zatanna. And I was just like, oh, my God. I fangirled out all over the place about Zatanna. And she's right there on the cover. So I think that this uh, issue might have done a little better, actually, than the second one. Of course, you know, so there's that. And, uh, yeah, all I can say is Zatanna. Pick it up. <laughs> um, this is a three and a half for me. 
And uh, if you are looking for something with a horror feel, or you love that old, uh, old Swamp Thing feel, then this this is the book for you. Let's see. And I think that's all I read this week. Let me make sure. I guess I'll do my obligatory Wonder Woman uh, pitch and spiel. I'll just go ahead and do it. I did read Legends of Wonder Woman number 17 a while ago, but I think it's finally out in print this week. This is how that works. It was a digital verse. So uh, I I am digging this one too as well. Uh, it's better than the current Wonder Woman book. Uh, there's a lot of forethought in the character development and her journey, and the artwork is just really amazing. And I'm really enjoying this story, but it's just really sad of what it, uh, you know how great this is compared to what is actually going on in the regular Wonder Woman book. I guess is why I'm a little so bitter. Uh, so yeah. I enjoy the narration. That might not be for everybody. Um, so yeah, that that's the only word of uh, uh, caution I would advise. That's not your thing. Um, we're really like winding into this this crazy world, and things are you know you have to kind of read between the lines with this particular uh, at this particular point in the story. But I like that they're not hitting us over the head with things. You know how I feel when they talk down to us as readers and think that we're stupid and we can't figure it out. So. Yeah, that's that's what I enjoy the most about this book. It just lets it be and it lets you figure it out for yourself. So this is a great solid entry. It's it's a solid three point two five for me. Uh, so if you're disappointed with the current Wonder Woman book, I think that you should definitely be picking up. Right so those are my thoughts for this week. I uh, will be back with Phil next week, and I look forward to talking to him and Char. Yay! So, this is Little Hellfire, signing off. But remember, as Charlie and I just discovered, it's not easy being green. See you next week. <laughs>